When this car right next to me was unveiled roughly one year ago, I never thought I would get to drive it because it seemed like a niche model overall and it seemed like access to it would be rather prohibitive. But here we are one year later talking about the brand new Mercedes-Benz CLE and I have to tell you that I am I don't know if I'm in love with it, but I really like this car and I really liked it from the moment it was unveiled. For me personally, I think Mercedes-Benz is hitting it out of the park with their designs lately, especially if I look at what their rivals are doing, namely <coughs> BMW. So they have stuck to their guns. They have stuck to their traditional elegant lines with some aggressive features here and there depending on the model and I think it's really paying off. Of course not every car from Mercedes-Benz is a good looking one but this one yes I like very much. <laughs> so what is a Mercedes-Benz CLE? Well as you can probably tell if I move out the way it's a proper it's a proper coupe and um, I think its um, main role here is to fill in the gap left uh, wide open by the removal from the range of the C-Class Coupe and the E-Class Coupe. Um, that was a decision announced just a few weeks before the CLE was unveiled. Um, and this is supposed to be a sort of surrogate car for those two. In that regard, it uses the same platform underneath it all, the same platform used by the C-Class and E-Class, and in terms of size, well, it depends how you look at it. In terms of overall length, it is bigger than the outgoing E-Class Coupe. However, in terms of wheelbase, it is just marginally larger than the one on the C-Class Coupe, so nowhere near the wheelbase of the new E-Class. What does that mean? It means that Mercedes-Benz probably prioritized driving over comfort. Um, Mercedes-Benz also said that it created this car because customers wanted uh, C-Class Coupe customers wanted the bigger one, uh, while E-Class customers wanted the, the next generation to be sportier. So this is supposed to do both of those things. As I said, the shorter wheelbase will make it a bit sportier to drive, but we're going to talk about that later on. So that's what this car is supposed to do in absolute numbers. It has 4.85 meters in length. Uh, and as I said, it's longer by five millimeters compared to the outgoing E-Class Coupe. Um, it has very simple lines. Um, it's very streamlined overall. And depending on how you configure it, it will have a more aggressive or more toned down face. This car has the AMG package on and it ha that means it includes a wide and aggressive front bumper with massive air gills on the sides and it has the traditional grille with tiny little Mercedes-Benz emblems on it. This particular tester also has the digital light headlamps uh, and they work brilliantly. In my opinion, this is the best technology you have today. Now, one thing that's, that's missing and people will definitely notice um, is the lack of a B-pillar. This is something the E-Class had uh, from day one. So it had no B-pillar. This car has a B-pillar and that brings it closer to the C-Class once again in terms of overall construction. Now, moving to the sides and the rear end, we have wide hips and clear cut lines overall and the car looks absolutely brilliant. Once again, the rear end does remind me more of the C-Class and you have a very sharp rear end as well. The boot is 450 liters, but the opening isn't that big. So if you have larger items you want to stick in there, you might have some uh, issues with it. We also have a uh, panoramic sunroof over here, which leaves about, I don't know, 40 centimeters of hard uh, sheet metal on the roof. I would have preferred this bit to be black. So in order to make this car like a bicolor finish, but it's blue like the rest of the car. We also have 19 inch wheels on this car, part of the AMG package. They are multi-spoke wheels and they look rather good. But let's hop inside and see what awaits in there. How much of the C-Class is in there and how much of the E-Class? 
Welcome aboard the brand new Mercedes-Benz CLE and uh, the mixture of elements from the C-Class and the E-Class continues over here as well. So we have the general similar layout inside this car as we do on the C-Class, on the new C-Class. Less of it compared to the new E-Class because the E-Class can have the super screen inside this one doesn't it's not necessarily a minus not everyone is into huge screens these days and some more expensive cars in the mercedes-benz range do have this setup for example the s class or the uh, sl model as well so this is the new mbux system if you want to say it you can say it. this is the e-class version because unlike on the C-Class, it has this new layout and it has some more advanced um, hardware behind it. Also, you can install various new apps. For example, you can install uh, TikTok on this uh, screen and you can install uh, games as well. That's what it has come to these days. Car manufacturers are concerned about giving you access to games while you drive or better said they are very concerned about uh, offering games inside the car because you have a good enough screen to do that and the hardware behind it well that's one of my frustrations with the car industry these days but both screens because the instrument cluster is a screen as well both work flawlessly they have impeccable graphics and I have nothing to criticize as a matter of fact once BMW dropped its dropped the ball with the new setup in my opinion inside its cars with the new iDrive 9 I think they have dropped the ball and I think the Mercedes-Benz setup is better today iDrive fell to the second place after iDrive had the dominant position for quite a few years but you will probably be interested in the build quality and the materials well inside this car because we have the AMG package installed we have these AMG seats that are made out of a combination of materials you have article leather you have natural leather and you have micro cut which is basically the central part over here Alcantara uh, but with a different name it's a textile material made out of 65% recycled uh, fiber and, it, and everything actually feels really nice to the touch the same goes for the door cards they also use natural leather on top article leather on the middle and on the uh, handrest uh, over here and some rough plastics on the bottom actually it's a very good combo as well you have very big door cards a one liter bottle will fit easily in there and the build quality is quite okay with one small flaw on this particular car this the door card on the top part over here seems to be squeaking sometimes but it's not terribly noticeable we have the three air vents at the top of the dash over here they look good we saw them on the sl for example and i like this setup the steering wheel is part of the amg package it's flat at the bottom and it has touch sensitive buttons on it which i really don't like I really hope Mercedes drops them all together in the future. Now, on, uh, this center console is made up of um, black shiny plastic, so it will get messed up in time. Um, lots of, for example, lot, lots of dust will be, um, this is basically a fingerprint and dust magnet over here and it will get scratched over time but at least it feels better than inside the c-class and we do have some uh, fake wood over here that also feels rather nice to the touch but it does squeak if you press on it but who's gonna press on that right okay so that's the interior there is some room in the back some people will be curious about that you have two isofix anchors in the back for one for each seat I did sit in the back, uh, well, I have enough knee room, but not enough headroom. Um, if I uh, adjust my driving posi uh, position comfortably and I sit in the back of the driver's seat, I have to sit something like this. 
and it's not exactly comfortable but I am six feet tall not exactly thin so it will depend on the configuration you have most likely you will be carrying people up to 5 5.6 in the back if you're taller it's not going to work but let's talk about the main premise of this car as I said Mercedes-Benz said that this CLE is supposed to replace the C-Class and the E-Class and it's supposed to appeal to a brand new sort of customer. Now customers have said they want C-Class Coupe model uh, customers have said that they want more space while E-Class Coupe customers wanted more dynamic, a more dynamic car, more sport, sportiness if you will. Well, I think they actually achieved that goal because this is definitely bigger than a C-Class. There's no question about it. I think especially in the back, there's more room. There's still not enough for six feet tall people, but it's more than in the outgoing C-Class. Uh, at the same time, this car does drive a bit better than the old E-Class. It does feel a bit sportier. It does feel a bit more composed, more tightly knit together, especially if you drive it fast in the bends. So I think Mercedes-Benz actually achieved what it set out to do. This is a mix between those two cars, but it does provide exactly what the customers asked for. And that, in my book, makes this car a success, if you will. Let's talk about drivetrains. So you have a lot of two liter uh, engines available. We have a two liter petrol engine that has been hybridized, uh, both mild and there's a plug-in hybrid as well. So you have a CLE 200, CLE 300, and a CLE 300E. Uh, each one of them uses the same M254 engine under the hood, so it's a two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, which has different levels of power. It has 204 horsepower on the 200, 258 horsepower on this one, and 380 horsepower on the CLE 300E because that's a plug-in hybrid. Um, we're driving the CLE 300 formatic which means we also have all-wheel drive we have 400 newton meters of torque and we have a nine speed automatic g-tronic gearbox which is standard on all models we also have um, in the range you also have a cle 53 amg model uh, with 380 horsepower and uh, there's a diesel as well the cle 220d with a two liter diesel all of them are mild hybrid except for the plug-in hybrid. And I've heard through the grapevine that the CLE 63 AMG will have a V8 under the hood. Apparently, Mercedes-Benz changed its mind when it saw how low the sales of the C63 AMG are. The C63, in case you forgot, uses a two liter turbocharged engine under the hood with a plug-in hybrid setup for about 680 horsepower so the CLE will have less power uh, the CLE 63 if it turns out to be using a um, V8 under the hood it will only have 585 horsepower so it will have about 100 horsepower less than the C63 but I think it will be a best seller if this news report turns out to be accurate for now it's just a rumor everyone's talking about it nothing no nobody knows for sure and so on um, in terms of driving this cle 300 is actually pretty fast off the line it will do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in about 6.2 seconds and flat out it will reach 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles per hour it's electronically limited to that speed and it does pick up speed rather nicely that mild hybrid setup means you also have a 23 horsepower electric motor integrated into the, the transmission and that comes with 200 newton meters of torque from zero rpm so that little motor has the job of recuperating energy whenever you're slowing down uh, through regenerative braking it also has the job of filling in the um, torque lag it also has the job of filling in um, any torque gap because of the turbocharged engine under the hood so the throttle response is impeccable even though the transmission does have some lag here and there so let's say you want to do you want to overtake it will take a while 
especially in comfort mode before the gearbox realizes what you're trying to do um, but in sport mode that's adjusted really well so you don't really have that issue uh, at all so that's the job of the electric motor integrated in, into the transmission as i said and it does work pretty well also setting off is done really smoothly because of that um, engine as well uh, the electric motor i beg your pardon uh, because of or thanks to that electric motor setting off is really smooth and fast as well plenty of grip but i did notice that in certain bends when you're pushing the car it does tend to understeer a bit so the front axle loses grip and you do tend to push towards the uh, outside of the bend but i think it could be down to the tires as well it's pretty pretty interesting to notice but what i can definitely confirm is that uh, you don't get um, to push this car's rear end out of the corner so you don't really get a lot of oversteer out of it maybe on the amg model you will get the race mode so you can actually get the tail spinning and be able to turn off the traction control but in this car that's not exactly possible so overall it's a decent car it's i wouldn't call it a sports car the old e-class coupe wasn't a sports car either neither was the c-class let's be frank but it does feel a bit more composed and i don't really feel it as heavy as the old e-class coupe was now that is mainly thanks to the suspension which is pretty pretty comfortable in most situations but it can get a bit sticky uh, and a bit stiffer in certain other situations so you have three suspension setups you can choose from the standard one the amg sport one which we have on this car and the adaptive dampers now this one has a sort of automatically adapting dampers on it they're they're called frequency response dampers basically they cannot be controlled using a driving mode so whenever you enter sport mode they don't become stiffer by default but they do adapt depending on the kind of road you're in and the, the work they have to put in. For example, if you're driving and the, the, the dampers feel like they have a lot of work to do, they do um, notice an increase in the frequency with which they have to respond, they will automatically stiffen up. It's a system we've seen on the 4 series, on the 3 series, on a number of cars in the industry recently because it's a very good mix between cost and um, the return on your investment so a lot of companies are starting to use them but if you get the adaptive dampers the true adaptive dampers uh, you also get a rear wheel steering and that will cut about 50 centimeters of your turning radius so between 11.2 and 10.7 meters which makes this car an even better car to drive around town compared to the old e-class coupe even though it is longer but the wheelbase is shorter so if you add those uh, rear steering wheels to the mix you do get a very compelling package for driving around town speaking of which i did drive this car around town and i found it to be quite comfortable and well sound insulated now we're on the highway and i also think that uh, it's quite a well damped car and a well sound insulated one we have plenty of sound deadening on board and i don't think it's quite noisy as some other people have said the only noise that does protrude into the si inside the cabin is coming from the wheels uh, and i think that could have been done better but the very sleek shape of the car does make it cut through the air very efficiently and cut down on the noise and um, the perceived NVH levels inside the cabin. So overall, I think the, G the CLE is quite a compelling offer. I think it delivered on the promises Mercedes-Benz made. I think it does exactly what it's supposed to do. I don't know if it's going to be a bestseller because, as I said before, it's not the fault of the car. It's just the segment it's operating in. And that's why Mercedes-Benz actually decided to streamline its offerings it, it will be cutting on uh, models that are not selling because they are not popular because the body style is not popular today and so on um, everybody wants a crossover and suv these days everybody wants a c-segment car 
This is not a C-segment car. It's a bigger car. It's a coupe. It's a very niche car. And I don't know if it's going to be a seller, but it's not because it's a bad car, but because people want SUVs these days. And that's the world we live in. Prices will vary depending on the market you're in. This car has an 81,000 euro price tag, but prices start around 55, 58,000 euros. Expensive or not, I would like you to tell me, and I would like you to tell me also if this car is interesting to you. I absolutely love it. I would buy one if I could afford one, but I can't. So until next time, don't forget to like, share, and of course, subscribe to maybe grow this channel enough so that I can afford a CLE. And uh, I would probably buy this exact configuration. Until next time, don't forget to feed your passions. Ciao.